Okay, in this section, I, I want to show um, if you've got your, your site set up with WordPress, you're going to see that on the left side dashboard, you have a lot more items now. You have a whole WooCommerce section with a bunch of settings that you can go to, right? All of those things that I set up when I went through the wizard, I can go back and make changes there. I can also see reports, sales reports, the status of my site. I can set up coupons, other, other things that we'll cover. I have a brand new section for products. Here's where I can manage products. I'll go into that in detail in a moment. And what else? Okay, they've added a new MailChimp section. And so whenever you add whenever you add a new theme or plugin, you often get new menu items. <coughs> which are new features. WooCommerce gives you a screen to manage settings and another to manage products. So I'm going to go to the products one for the moment. Uh, settings is um, a little too technical that I want to get into at the moment but I, I want to show here that I can start to create products uh, pretty fast. See here under products. Let's see, do I have any default products? No defaults, okay. So I can easily add a new product. Then we have these concepts of categories, tags, and attributes. Let me explain these. WooCommerce products have categories, tags, attributes. If you visit most e-commerce sites, let's say Amazon, um, I want to get a camera so I'll go into the section all about cameras. Maybe I want to focus. I want to get um, a Canon camera. <coughs> Maybe focus more. I want to get a $200 Canon camera instead of a $2,000 one. So if you categorize your products, people can, can dig down to the more specific things that they need. So ways to organize your products so that customers can find them easier. Now let's say, yes. Does that look with Amazon with little filters on the left that appear? Yes, exactly. Amazon does it very well because they've got so many products, they have to organize and subcategorize, and so you can filter things. This is related to that so that people can find your products <coughs> a lot easier. Making up categories is highly recommended for your users and for SEO. This is more organization. This is more keywords. My categories could be SEO keywords that people are searching for. Now, there, there's an art and a science and nuance to all of that, but once you kind of know this, that I can categorize and organize my site like if I call it simply cookies that might not be as valuable as organic cookies if I'm selling organic cookies of course I'm not just gonna shoehorn the one keyword into a into a product if it doesn't make sense but um, I can organize all types of things in a category so examples Cakes, cookies, sale. Gluten free treats. You know, I don't have to literally just cookies cakes. I could put uh, an item in more than one category. I am selling cookies, so I've categorized it in cookies. 
but I also sell versions of those cookies that are gluten free so you can organize in multiple categories and th these things are on sale at the moment you can categorize in multiple categories so this one cookie could exist in the sale category as well as the gluten-free tags less recommended than categories and serve a similar purpose it's kind of confusing for beginners they both seem to be the same because I can make tags that are also cookies and cakes and sale and so forth and what would be the difference between category and tag the way I, I sort of explain it is a category is the big idea and then a tag is the little detail so more more um, more specific here cakes so all or let's do pies all of the pies that I'm selling all of the kinds of pies they all fall in that category but then the details are that I'm selling pecan pie apple pie um, cherry pie etc so I have here three different tags. This product is tagged as a pecan pie, but also categorized as pies. So all pies are in one filter. And then pecan pies, there's the two or three that I sell. Attributes, a complex way to make variations. It, I think it works best with the examples that they use here about t-shirts. I sell t-shirts that are large, small, and extra large. I sell the same t-shirt, but in those variations, large, small, extra large. Or what if I sell those t-shirts in those variations, but also a red version, and a blue version, and a yellow version. So these are ways to make variations on a particular product in the example of Victor's Bakery I sell cookies but I sell them as one dozen a batch of one dozen or a batch of two dozen or half a dozen so I'm selling 12 at a time or 24 or 6 at a time uh, so it's all pecan it's all pecan cookies but then there are those variations but with prices again I mean, of course, a compl complex way to make variations could be tied with prices. One version of this product is more expensive than another. <coughs> so all of this is inside of this um, products section. When dealing with clients, I usually say recommendation um, start defining your categories first, then create products, then add tags. So think of the big ideas where all of your products are going to be grouped into first. And then start creating some products. And then you figure out, OK, this product, a tag might also be chocolate, or this one, low-cal. So I can start to group and organize my content so that people can find it and, and filter it easier.
one dozen, two dozen, half a dozen. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the big idea, it's a cookie. The detail, it's a pecan cookie, and the and the attribute is that it's half a dozen. So uh, I would, I'll show you that right now. If we go here to, again, I would recommend first starting on category. And down here, I have the uncategorized category. Everyone has this by default, and this is a big mark of an amateur, someone that doesn't know what they're doing, that they didn't go to all their settings, and this is hurting their professionalism and their SEO, because everyone, by default, all your products are under the uncategorized category. So this is one thing I want to do early on. Like I said, in Victor's Bakery, I'm going to have a section of cookies. Uh, don't worry about slug, uh, parent, don't worry about that just yet. Description. So uh, this, notice down here it says, this description is not prominent by default. However, some themes may show it. Whatever you write here is part of your site. Whatever you write here could be keywords that the search engines could find and help analyze you with, but they may not be quite visible. You know, right away when your when your site is up running, it might not quite be visible, but it's part of your site in the code of your site, which the search engines can read. So I would recommend for <coughs> categories add a description even if the text doesn't appear on screen because the search engines can still see it and that can help you So if I'm doing cookies, I will say um, authentic, I will say classic cookies with modern ingredients. I have a keyword here, classic cookie, and say no high, t high fructose corn syrup. You know, whatever keywords might be important in a in a bakery that people might search for on the search engines, and that are relevant to my product, I would put them into descriptions and other places like this. Yeah, the search engine would still find it because it's part of the code of your website and the search engines can read the code. So depending, and it says right here, depending on your theme, some of them, the themes might show this. Even if it doesn't, the search engines can still see it. So this is a place for you to write some keywords to help your, your rankings. And whenever I talk about keywords, I do, however, stress more about writing complete sentences, not just writing cookie, comma, uh, tasty, comma, gluten-free, you know, writing real, real sentences, not just <coughs> keywords. Oops. So when I save that, oh, I can also add a thumbnail if I want. When I save that, now I've got a new cookies <coughs> category. There's a description. If I put an image, I can go back to edit it. One thing to note that I don't like about WordPress is sometimes there are buttons that you don't know exist 
until you put your mouse there. So I want to edit the cookie. How do I do it? I just click on edit. Where's edit? There it is. Not there. There. So there's a couple of places, specifically on products and pages and posts, when there's an actual thing to edit, you often have to hover your mouse somewhere near it, and then, <coughs> and then an option will appear there to edit it or delete it or something. There are currently no products in this category. And then I can add another one. Now, here under Parent, um, assign a pattern term to create a hierarchy. The term jazz, for example, would be the parent of bebop and big band. That's just telling you that you might you might sell um, subcategories of things. Like uh, I I might have um, like for cameras. I have Canon cameras, and then I have a subcategory expensive or affordable. So affordable is a kind of a Canon camera or expensive is a kind of a Canon camera. It's a hierarchy. I'll do one more. Let's say all of our cakes, all our cakes are um, nine inch round, three layers. I've got a new uh, category. After I've got a couple of categories, I can do products. I add a new product. I have a spot for a product name, product description, etc. various boxes that will go into detail. There's a pretty complex one in the middle I'll get to, but on the right side over here then I see categories. Is, is it part of cookies? You can add more than one category, like I said. Obviously in my case it doesn't make sense to do this. But if there are other categories that make sense to, to group together, you can do it. There's a spot to add a product image. I can make a whole gallery of products. So instead of just one photo of the cookie head-on, I can put it at angles, and I can put it on a, uh, you know, in a plate, etc. And I'll have a, a, gal a gallery. There's another spot for a shorter description. Maybe there's a preview before I see the whole text. Let's say main description. bunch of items here. Short description. There's all of these items that I'll get into, but for the moment I have a uh, I have either a simple product, group product, external variable. I'll, I'll get to these, but just as a starting point, simple product is it virtual? Is it downloadable? Sometimes you get a pop-up to help explain. And right now the price of this, um, of these cookies, well, let's say something like this. Uh, main description, 10 cookies. I'm selling, the, I'm selling 10 cookies in one batch. So how much would you say 10 cookies cost? Uh, $14? Is that a good price? We can change it. There's a sale price. They're all on sale for $11. And putting it on a schedule. This is a relatively new thing. This is really nice. You can set this up that there's a sale price for this item and, and program it that it only happens from a certain time. Starting today until next week. Because uh, it's happened so many times that people set up these sales and they forget that there's a sale and you're selling your products at the wrong price. So 
So is this item taxable? What's its other um, items here? We'll come back. May publish. So it doesn't look very impressive because I didn't really add any pictures or anything like that, but in my shopping, in my catalog, I've got a product. Oh, look, it's on sale. And um, I can add it right away, or I can click to see details. Again, if I had the picture, it would show up there, and more details, and it's marked as a sale. I want to change the color of that. I want to change the position. Depending on the features of the theme, you may be able to customize this. Depending if it's a free theme, you may be able to do some things or not. Oftentimes with the premium themes, you can do even more. This is where the short description would have appeared. Here's the long description. We have these features like, oh, there's a built-in way for people to review my product. So you see, it's pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful out of the box. A person can add it to their cart, and they have this whole view cart already set up. And it looks like a real professional site. You even have the ability for coupons. It has live shipping if you set that up with Jetpack and so forth. But right now, it's just doing a flat rate. And when I proceed, if I've got it set up for my payment method, um, you know it will uh, it will ask me for that information and go through the whole process. And so this manages the various um, the various things that it's in stock and the pricing and all of that when it was published. And again, I would like to edit that item, but I don't see an edit until I hover over it, and then I can go back to edit. want to get just into all of these details just yet you can ex you can explore these of course if you have this kind of site um, what I want yes did WooCommerce give us the functionality with all these different aspects of a product or WordPress already has that this is all coming from WooCommerce okay. so since we is it a, a plugin or extension uh, yeah, like I like I showed plugin. earlier when I went into plugins, plugins I added the plugin. Yeah. Yeah, so when I added the WooCommerce plugin, <coughs> it automatically added up all of these new boxes and features that they don't they don't come with with WordPress. WordPress just has like the title of something and description. But then WooCommerce gives you all of these features about pricing and coupons and all of that, and that's the extra plugin, the extra feature we added to the WordPress. Now, in the time that we have here, I think we can do something here. It's a little technical, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. I'm showing all of this on, on a WordPress site. And like I said, you have to uh, pay for this to have it on a real site, you know, victorsbakery.com. If you notice the web address, however, this says localhost slash WordPress 
etc. I don't have it on a real internet site. It's not really victorsbakery.com. There is a way to run this stuff off of your computer. It is kind of technical, uh, a little complex. We're going to give it a shot as a class together to set this up because obviously you want to do this as well. I want to practice with WordPress and make it work. So I'll kind of walk you through that process in a moment. Yes. So we can practice with WordPress as long as we want to and set up everything we want and everything. And then once we can set up the ready, then we'll be on the internet. Yes and no. I'm not on, uh, I'm not on WordPress.com. I'm not on WordPress.org or anything like that. I'm running on a virtual server. Um, and I could, when I'm comfortable with this, transfer it to the real internet. This is not on the real internet. No one can access this. It's only on my computer. Well, that's what I'm about to talk about. But this is what I'm saying, that it is a, it is a little bit of a complex thing, and I'll show how to set it up. But you can... I can set this up right now on my computer and I'll show us how to do it and I could transfer it to the real internet but it is really technical so I think as a sort of a learning tool about how it works I'll show how it works but we're not gonna quite have time to how do I transfer it to the real internet uh, we don't we won't have time for that that's per perhaps also the help you can get from your from your service provider but I can start to show you here how to set this up to practice WordPress at your own computer because eventually you want to get it set up at your at your regular provider.